Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and today's shout out goes to Armin Bastani and Anis Mehdi. Both were first to say first in one of my recent videos, and both win the shout out, so congratulations! Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and I have a review of a neat new drone that just came in. This is the MJX Bug 7 B7. So, what is the B7? Well, you're looking at it, it's a little brushless motor folding drone, as you see here. What's special about it, though, folks, is that this is under 250 grams. That's the big thing about... Oh, let me turn it back off again. That's the big thing about this is that it's under 250 grams. And what that means, folks, is that this does not require registration for flying it in most countries. Okay? This is one of the... You know, this year, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of these coming out. Um, under 250 gram drones trying to avoid that registration problems that most countries have placed on people who have drones that if you go over 250 grams you have to register the drone this one you do not okay um let's talk about it other special thing about it is it has a very high resolution camera that's 4k uh hd video that this records however that 4k hd video is recording at 16 frames per second so keep in mind there's going to be you know it's not really smooth 4K. However, you can also record in 2.5K at 20 frames per second. A little bit better, okay? Um, I would recommend that most people actually do that, if, uh, flying this at um, with a 2.5K, because it, it produces almost as good a picture as the 4K, but uh, a lot smoother. Uh, but with that in mind, this does record to an SD card, and you are going to need to use a good SD card here. I recommend, folks, okay, the, in the manual it says use class 10 or higher. I tried class 10, and it was not fast enough to keep up with recording from these, this high-resolution camera. I recommend going to the U-Class. I'm using a 32 gigabyte U3 card. I would recommend something like that. And you can't go above 32 gigabyte. Do not get 64 gigabyte or 128. It will not work with this card reader. Uh, you're going to need to use 32 gigabyte. I recommend U3, U3 class. Okay, not class 10. It's just not fast enough. Other special thing about this camera, it is GPS. Okay, that makes us able to return to home on command, on loss of signal from the transmitter, or on low battery. It'll come back, actually, it'll come back within 30 meters, and then it'll let you fly around within 30 meters until the battery's depleted, then it'll land itself. Um, other things this has is optical flow sensor if case uh, your GPS signal is not strong you can still have stable flight using the optical flow system that can be turned on or off and one other thing this has that I'm not sure quite what what it's for is this LED light on the bottom it does not light up at, le at least that I can see which is telling me it might be an IR LED light um, doesn't mention much in the camera other than that this is a light <laughs> but I think it might be an uh, IR aid to the optical flow sensor in effect, you know, sending down a light to the ground, an infrared light so that the optical flow sensor in, in low light level conditions might be able to work. I think, I think that's what that is. I can't confirm it. Since I can't see a visible light, that's telling me it's IR light. <laughs> okay, other things about it, uh, we mentioned the brushless motors on this. These are 1306 uh, 2750 kV motors with four amp ESCs to, to power them. Uh, the other also is the battery. Let's talk about the battery that comes with this. This is available in one, two, or three battery versions. If you want extra batteries or are contemplating getting extra batteries, get them at the time of purchase. Otherwise, you're gonna have, you might have a hard time getting spare batteries at a later date. I recommend getting them at the time of purchase. And more about these batteries, these are 7.6 volt, 1500 milliamp per hour batteries. Um, it's supposed to give this drone 15 minutes of flight time that would be in hover i got a feeling we're going to probably get a lot less flight time when we actually go out into the field um what haven't i mentioned yet the controller this is the controller for this drone now if you look at this controller these antennas one of them is not a fake and i'm trying to see which one it is this one here you can actually see a wire coming up in the center there so this one is a real antenna for once However, this one is a fake. <laughs> and with that, we got this little uh, phone holder for your phone. You've got to pull it up all the way so that this bottom comes out so you can clip your phone in. Uh, other things on this controller is we have 
automatic takeoff and automatic landing button right there. On this right side here, we have rates. We can select different rates by holding the button down for three seconds, and it'll switch from low to high rate. If you want to fly without the GPS or with the GPS, you can fly a little bit faster if you hold this button down. Uh, now, it also shows a little light fixture here. But what this does, folks, is if you are in optical flow mode and you go into optical flow mode by turning the GPS system off, you can turn the optical flow also on or off by a quick press of this button when the GPS system is off. A quick press of this button will turn off the, G the optical flow so that you can do sport flying in effect. Okay, that's the idea of why you would want to turn the optical flow off. Now, one other big thing, always make sure if you're just going to be flying this in GPS mode, Make sure GPS is on or else you may have a bad day the first time you take off with this drone and it starts to drift away from you, especially if you're a beginner. It might have been because you had not had GPS system on. So make sure the GPS is on by pushing this button all the way up. Other switches on this here, um, we have a camera switch here. This camera button, you hold it down for three seconds, that starts, and then you hold it down again after the flight to stop the video uh, recording and if you want to take a photo you do a quick press of this button here and we'll take a photo this button here is for automatic return to home and landing quick press and the drone will start to fly back this unlock button arms the motors you do a quick press of this button and the motors will start to spin and then you can press the automatic takeoff button and the drone will lift off or you can give a throttle and the drone will lift off and um, if you want to need to do an emergency stop you hold this button down for three seconds and the motors will stop. Do not do that in flight, folks, or else the aircraft will drop from the sky. This is only in case you end up in a, um, in a tree <laughs> and it's stuck up there and the motors are still trying to run. Turn them off by pressing this button and holding it down for three seconds and those motors will stop. And you have the on-off switch here. Uh, let's look at the... Uh, it has a real nice LCD screen. Let's see if you can see that there. I'm bringing it up to the camera. Um, it shows... Um, Signal strength from the drone, signal strength that the, the drone is receiving from the controller, battery power of the drone, which is zero right now because I don't have the drone on, battery power of the controller. It shows distance and height of the drone along with whether the GPS is on or off. Right now I got it off, and now I got it turned on. Uh, the number of satellites that are being received and uh, the rate low or high rate again you can change that by holding this button down for three seconds and it switches to high rate and then holding it down for three seconds switches to low rate and the mode mode two um got it, its default is mode two you can actually set that to mode one by holding this button down and uh, pressing this button oh actually you got to do that while turning it on holding this button down turning it on the controller on and these will be going up, up, it's waiting for signal, and then you press this button here. And now we're in mode one. And then we press it again, back to mode two, because I wanted mode two, and we come out of that by pressing that there. So, also, one other thing, if your drone is not connected to the controller, you can uh, put this into connection mode by holding this unlock button down while turning on the transmitter, and then turn on the drone and the drone will automatically connect and you won't need to do that again you you only need to do that maybe the first time you take this out of the box because i needed to do that <laughs> that's how all mgx drones by the way if you have an mgx drone and it's not connecting to the drone you put the, the controller into connection mode by holding that unlock button down while turning on the controller let's see i didn't mention the app the mrc pro app that this uses requires you to have a phone with 802.11ac Wi-Fi. Now, not everybody has a phone with 802.11ac Wi-Fi. Before you purchase this drone, I strongly recommend, and i say it again, strongly recommend that you check that your phone is indeed capable of using 802.11ac Wi-Fi, or you will be very disappointed when you get this drone. Okay, that's just a heads up, folks. Um, but with that app, it enables you to view FP, real-time FPV video from the drone on your phone uh, to a distance of about 300 meters. That's the predicted range of this drone. We'll see if that's actually true. I, if I get 300 meters range when I go flying today. 
But um, with that also, that app also gives you the capability of follow me, circle me, and it also even has waypoint mode control on in the settings of that uh, app. Um, other thing about it, you can. It also has drone and camera settings that you can modify. Like for the drone settings, um, it it has geofence uh, settings for altitude and distance, along with orbit diameter for circle me mode, along with return to home altitude uh, settings for um, return to home mode, along with compass and gyro calibration. Um, it also has a self check status indications for the gyro, the barometer the compass, and the GPS. That's also available in the app, along with a flight log summary. And additionally, you can change the camera settings of the uh, drone from 4K to 2.5K video. Um, it also has brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, and exposure settings, along with special effects settings for grayscale, brightness, and um, I forgot <laughs> what the other one is, but I'll have a picture up here showing you it. Along with FPV quality settings, you can change that to um, an additional. There's some additional settings in there too. I'm missing, but I'm going to put little screenshots of each of those settings up here in, the, in during the discussion of this. Now let's talk about what you get in the box. You get in the box your user manual, and there's also a quick start manual for those of you a little more experienced that don't need to read your user manual. However, I strongly recommend that everybody reads this user manual before flying. You get a nice set of bugs. Uh, stickers they always include these with their drones that's pretty cool you get the drone um i got the two battery version i got the main battery in the on the drone by the way here's how you remove that battery you pinch these two connectors and it pops out like so and it slides back in like so clicks in um you get the battery charger now it's a two two point battery charger so you can charge two batteries at once with this uh, using a type c USB cable plugged into a wall charger. I strongly recommend using two amps or above wall charger to charge this or else you'll be waiting all night if you try to charge this through your computer's USB port, which is only 500 milliamps. <laughs> It'll take forever to charge these uh, big batteries. You get the controller. You get a spare, full spare set of propellers. You get a little... <laughs> Little Phillips screwdriver, along with this is a prop puller. It, it actually goes on top of these uh, um, prop nuts, and then you squeeze them together, and then you can uh, loosen them up without using a uh, pair, of pair of pliers, which will probably scratch those up. And you get four little grommets that go, I believe, under the uh, propellers. So I think I've mentioned everything. Let me go over my list here before we we quit and go out in the field that's about it so let's take this out into the field and see how it flies so hope you enjoy this flight good morning quadcopter 101 out here in a beautiful day out here in the desert practicing social distancing um i forgot to mention something about the bug 7 here in that it has its front lens its front camera lens can be bent up or down now it's not done remotely you're gonna have to manually tilt this in my case like that very stiff folks but uh, it can be manually tilted. And the reason you want to tilt it a little bit downward is so you don't see the props in the image. Um, I still might see some props because this has a very wide angle lens. But I think I'm going to leave it right that for now. We're going to start with it, with it at that uh, downward angle of about, I'm guessing, about 30 degrees, <laughs> 20 degrees. Bring it up a little bit more. Now I'm hoping not, the props ain't going to show up. Okay, let's connect this to the controller show you how to do that and then we're going to do a compass calibration without using the app you don't really need to do use the app to actually fly this drone since it records to an sd card you can fly it line of sight and i want to show you how to calibrate that compass without the app so to turn this on let's put it on a flat level surface and here's the on off switch up front and pressing and holding it and that should bring it up and then we're going to turn this on now again if your controller does not bind to the drone the way to get it to bind is hold down this red button while turning it on and it will bind automatically now right now this enters automatically into compass calibration mode and i don't know if you can see that or not i hope you can see that but there's a flashing compass signal right there and that's telling me we need to do horizontal turns counterclockwise three of them one two three and then we switch to nose up turns also counterclockwise one 
two, <laughs> two, and three. And that should complete the compass calibration. And that little insignia, flashing insignia goes away. And that tells us we have compass calibration completed. Okay, now I'm going to connect it to the app. I am going to fly with the app because I want to see how far the FPV goes on this. So give me a second while I connect to the 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Okay, this is the MRC app available on Google Play and iTunes. And right now I see I have a Wi-Fi connection, FPV Wi-Fi connection. And we also have 12 satellites on the LCD screen. I can see that, which tells us we have sufficient satellites to fly. So we're ready to actually to go. Now, but before we go, I want to set the video to 2.5K resolution. We're going to do the first flight in 2.5K, and then we'll do a follow-on flight in 4K. And the reason I want to do this is I am going to upload this to YouTube, the review itself, in 1080p. But I'm going to also include links to the raw video from the drone to show you, for those of you who want to see the difference in quality, quality between the 2.5K and the 4K. So... Keep that in mind, folks. Okay, we are in 2.5K mode, and I'm going to start the video recording by pressing and holding this button here. And we got video recording started, and we're going to unlock the motors by pressing this button here. And that's spin up, and then I'm going to press the automatic takeoff button. We'll see the stability of the drone. Well, it's very stable, so we know the compass calibration is correct. So let me take it up a bit higher, get into the video, and say... How do you like my shirt today, folks? <laughs> nice one for today. Okay, I'm looking at the camera. It's pointed a little bit downward. That's what I want. Again, I hope the props aren't showing up. It doesn't look like they are on my uh, LCD screen, but I could be wrong. So we're recording. Let's head out bond. Now, before we head up bond, let's check our antennas. I got them pointed downward like such. I'm going to point them toward the flat side of the antennas, toward the drone as it's going outbound to give us maximum range, hopefully. And I want to go a bit higher too, Co, because I don't want to hit the ground on the way out. Okay, and away we go. It's going pretty fast. I'm going to turn to the left, folks. I want to go this way. Going up a bit higher. A bit higher. And I hope that is recording properly. This little black drone, I can actually see it out at that distance here. Let's plop it right there. What distance are we here? Well, I look down on my screen. It's about 185 meters away. How's the FPV? FPV looks frozen. <laughs> so it didn't even make it to 185 meters before the FPV froze. It says not connected. So we lost FPV somewhere in that range there. I'm going to hit the automatic return. Turn to home. Did a quick press. I don't know if that's activated or not is it moving yeah it's moving it's coming back it looks like it's climbing first and oh no it's zipping right back so keep in mind you know this is not a long distance fpv flyer i lost fpv i don't know what range let me look on here to see if it shows the range probably down in the lower right corner it's a little bit too bright but there's the drone overhead let's do it let it do an automatic landing so this little drone is not really for long distance flying. <laughs> it's for short, short range, about 100 meters, I'd say, 150 meters. But again, keep in mind, you can go farther out and fly it uh, line, line of sight. Well, actually, <laughs> just fly it until <laughs> it reaches its max distance from the controller. Because I, I think its maximum range is probably a lot farther than 185 meters. But let's let it come down and we'll... Okay, I got FPV back again. So we're good, but I'm letting it land because I want to see how accurate its landing is. And it's not too bad. Let's chop it up that little, little weed there. <laughs> the weed whacker. And we'll stop that video recording right there too. Okay. So we're going to repeat that flight, only this time in 4K, so we have a direct comparison. Uh, let me go into the settings again. Select 4K, 4K resolution. Come out of that. Start the video recording again. And recording is started. And starting the motors again by pressing that button quickly. Automatic takeoff. Going up. 
Going up and up. I'm going to slow it down this time. And let's see how far out we can go before we lose signal. It's starting to get choppy already there. And what's that distance there? Um, 30 meters. <laughs> okay, I got it back again. This time I'm holding my, the flat end of my phone toward the drone. Hoping that that will improve the reception. Going out again. Still heading outbound, still have signal. Okay, I lost it there again. And the distance this time is 106 meters. Got it back. Going forward again. So, you know, it's a very choppy signal. The FPV on this <laughs> is not the best. Okay, I lost it again there. Okay, leveling off and going out again. Oops. How far are we right now? 150 meters away. So it's very choppy out there at 150. Going forward again. Raising my antenna straight up here. Oops. No, I don't want to go toward the road. I don't want to go that side of the road. Okay, very choppy FPV still. Going forward again, though. We are out at uh, 220 meters this time. Now, what I'm doing, folks, is keeping the flat end of my phone toward the drone the back end of my drone, or my phone, and uh, that's improving the FPV range, although it's very choppy. Going forward again. By the way, how's my battery? Battery's good. Okay, stopping again. And that seems to be about at 254 meters, folks. So let's do that return to home again. Press the return to home button. And is the range decreasing? Yes, it is. So it's coming home. 220, 200, 199. And we'll see when we get FPV back again. Our drone is coming home. I can hear it. I can see it. It's coming back pretty fast. I don't know if you see it up there, folks. Tiny little thing, but coming right overhead. I'm going to get away from the, the pad. So we can, we can watch it come down. Directly overhead right now and descending. Do we have signal back yet? Not yet. Okay, have signal back now. So it reconnected. I see it again. So we got out to 250 meters that time, folks. And the way I did it was I kept the flat end of the back end of my phone pointed toward the drone and our battery power is still good it's shown about 75 percent so let's let it come back down and now I'm gonna stop that recording so we got two comparison videos okay and there we go <laughs> okay there it finally shut off and I'll stop that video recording okay now in the interest of saving space on my card <laughs> I'm gonna switch back to 2.5k okay 2.5k now let's let's take to the air let's see if I can start it manually by down and out but down and in nope you got to start it I start the motors or start the video recording at 2.5k and pressing the automatic takeoff or the unlock and automatic takeoff this time let's try the advanced features of follow me let's go up a little bit higher I'm gonna get into the picture then in the upper left corner of the app Here, let me sync this up <laughs> upper left corner of the app Sync one more time. There's those four boxes there. P press that and select follow me and slide it to the right. And not enough, or okay, not enough distance. You, you got to go 30 meters for a lot of these. I guess also this one too. So let's go a little farther out. Let's go a little bit higher up too. Let's select follow me one more time. Swipe to the right. And there we go. We're in follow me. So what type of follow me do we got here? Well, it's not a Hudson follow me, or is it? 
Let's see if it turns toward me. Is it turning toward me? It's turning toward me. So it's a uh, D DJI style follow me, like being pulled on a string. <laughs> Difference between Hubson and DJI, Hubson stays a compass position away from you. If it's north of your position, it'll stay there. If it's south, it'll, it'll move. Is it following me or is it just staying there? Oh, it's following me. Okay, there we go. Now, a downside of this drone. There are a couple downsides that I can see right now. First off is we're seeing quite a bit of uh, fish eye effect um, with this lens on this camera. That's because this camera is uh, intended or I've designed, I can tell right, being a 2.5K camera, it is a security camera, folks. One of those doorbell cameras, that's what they're using on this. It's not really meant for uh, photographic use, but it is high resolution enough that, <laughs> that, it, that it should look good. But um, the other downside of that is I'm not sure if it's really 4K. I think it might be interpolated video to 4K. Boy, is it's following me slow. Slow to react. I guess that's to keep down the jerkiness of it. But it is following me. I'm looking at the screen. Okay. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's really 4K. Maybe some of the people can confirm it. Let me walk toward it. Let's see how it works walking toward it and follow me. But uh, you know, looking at the raw videos, maybe some of uh, my experts on video might be able to tell me whether it's true 4K or just interpolate it from the 2.5K. Okay, that's enough of follow me. Let's stop that right there. And let's also stop the video recording for now because I want to bring it overhead. Bring it back toward me. And from that point there, let's turn it toward me a bit. I don't know, you can just barely see me there. I'm gonna start the video recording one more time and we're gonna try circle position. Orbit flight. And again, we gotta slide it. And let's see what it does. There it goes. Now I have it set for five meters orbit. Let me find the center of the orbit. You can adjust that in the settings. In fact, let's do that. This is kind of a short orbit. So let's stop that. Stop the orbit. And let's go into settings. I can't remember which settings it was. Where did we stop the video recording too? Video recording stop. I think it's the top settings that you can do that. No, nope, you can't set it there. Uh, top settings, camera settings, bottom settings. I, I gotta set this on the ground. Hold on, folks. To readjust that, let me put it on the ground. You can't be fine. And to adjust the like um, geofences parameters, you have to be on the ground level uh, or not flying. Now we're going to increase the orbit diameter. Oh, it goes all the way out to 50 meters. I don't want to default, but 20 meters. Let's try 20 meters. See what that does. Orbit, and you also can set the return to own alt altitude here too, as you can see. But let's come out of that. Confirm, update the data settings. Start the video recording one more time. Starting the motors one more time. Automatic one more time. Going up. And 20 meters away. Let me go about 20 meters away. And also at the same time, let's hit that orbit flight. And sliding. Slide. And there we go. 20 meter orbit. Okay, we're getting a little low in battery. Let me take it up a bit. Just telling us we're low. What's our half battery? That's not really low. But there's its orbit, folks. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it's working really well. I set it out way far for this orbit, though, this 20 meter orbit. Okay, I, that, I got a warning there, a yellow warning, but it is real hard to see that with my old eyes, what that yellow warning is. The battery only supports the drone flying. So
So we got to stay close for the remainder of the battery. Okay, let's stop that. Stop the recording, or stop the follow me. Uh, orbit flight. Orbit flight is stopped. Let's bring it back toward me. And for the remainder of the battery. I got a spare battery, folks. We're going to pop that in after this. But for the remainder of this battery, let's fly it within 30 meters until its battery is depleted. Now I want to see what it does when its battery does deplete. Apparently, I'm seeing it right now. It's starting to land. <laughs> let's bring it close and see if it does land. Okay, it's still showing like half battery power on mine. But uh, bring it down a little lower. And what I want to do is I am going to turn off the GPS. And we're going to try that optical flow or sport flying to burn up the rest of this battery. Right now it's drifting. Or is it, or is it using its optical flow? Let's see. I turned the GPS off. Does it stop? Does it drift? No, optical flow is on. Let's turn optical flow off, though. Remember, quick press of this. Oh, that light just came on. <laughs> That light does work. That didn't work for me. I guess it only works when it's flying. Okay. So let's go to high rate. Um, I hunt, we do high rate again. Oh, hold this button down here. We're in high rate right now. Let's, for the remainder of the battery, let's fly in high rate. See how fast it'll fly. Reasonable well. Let's do a flight overhead here. Come down lower. Zoom. Now, um, I mentioned the fisheye effect on this. You know, MJX and I don't know. This is the their first attempt, I guess, in the under 250 gram class with the brushless motor, and good for them for doing that. You know, I hope all the others try to do that. But. Um, what they need to do next, what they really need to incorporate, along with this high-resolution camera, here, okay, there's a low battery return to home, but what they really need to do is incorporate some type of image stabilization. Now, now it's going to where it originally took off from. I was out here in the desert for that second takeoff. But uh, some type of image stabilization, either mechanical or, in this, you know, incorporating that in a 250 gram would be kind of difficult. Although it's been done, I guess, by Matt or DJI. But a simpler, cheaper way, I think, to do it is to do it the same way they did with the Tello, and that's incorporate a microprocessor, a high speed microprocessor, to do electronic image, image stabilization. That would put this over the top and really make it a popular drone, in my opinion, to have that. I don't know why they didn't do that. You know, only only uh, the Tello right now is the only drone I can think of that has onboard image stabilization. All the others, there's others that claim electronic, and the way they do it is through your phone. But that's that's just a waste. Okay, come on, shut. Boy, with on a low battery return to home, these batteries or these motors slow down sl slowly. You know, let's do emergency stop. Just shut it off there. Shut down. Throttle down. Okay. <laughs> that last motor don't want to stop. Oh, these last three motors. And I don't want to put my finger in there. Okay, MJX, there's a little bit of a uh, issue there, and that is a uh, low battery shutdown or return to home. Um, the motor doesn't want to seem to stop. What's up with that? How about return to home? I pressed the return to home button. This motor is still spinning, but I can't tell if it's... If I, here, I'm going to turn it off this way. Shut down. <laughs> okay, MJX. There's one little issue with your... Your drone, I'm going to pull the battery is what I'm going to do. There we go. I shut it down. 
in that these are spinning at real low idle speed on that low battery return to home. So you might want to look into that MGX, what's causing that. Okay, that's the flight time you get with one battery. Let's pop in another battery and try some other things with this particular drone. Okay, we're back. I got a second battery in there. I already did the compass calibration. Um, also, I remember if you turn off the GPS, turn it back on. Whenever you turn this off, try to pin yourself to turn it back on because if you go flying with this without the GPS and it starts drifting away, uh, first thing to check is to make sure that GPS is on. So we're good to go there. Uh, what I want to do, folks, is I want to go into maps, map mode and location here. And we're going to try um, waypoint flying. And to do that, we are... Now, before I came out here, or actually, when I, before I connected to the drone, I connected to my data network first with the app open and went into map mode here. And what I, it does is it downloads the images, the maps, into the phone's cache before you connect to the drone. Because once you connect to the drone, you're not going to be connected to the data network, or most phones at least and you will not be able to see any map information. Okay, that's how I'm seeing map information, is I connected this first without connecting to the drone, and then downloaded the apps by scrolling over the area where I was, and it remembers that is what I'm trying to say. Okay, let's go into uh, lower right corner. See that little uh, finger pointing? And we're gonna click on that. Oh, we gotta be flying first, okay. So let's start the video recording then first and put it in the air starting the motors automatic takeoff going up a bit higher actually I want to go up to about that height because <laughs> some of this elevate this land goes up <laughs> as you move around okay now I'm going to select pointing and uh, let's try the first one and click there and then click let's go over here well, I guess you can only do one with that one. Let's try it again. The second one, the middle one. Let's try there, then there, and then there, and then there, and then back toward us. Or near us, right there. And then we're going to hit submit, submit, and then slide it, and, and then I'm going to view there. Actually, let's go back to the map view and see how it progresses along the track. And also, am I recording in Mombazin? I'm not sure. Hold on. I hope it's recording in Mombazin. If not, I will start it up. <laughs> let's go into the second. Boy, it does these real dice, doesn't it? Go into number three. Turning. Going to number four. It should be going to number four. Which is overhead. And then I'll turn there. And go to number five. Or actually, number five is right by me, so it should come back toward my position, or, or near me at least. And here it comes. Okay, so it did that actually rather nicely. Let's come down a bit. We're going to do another one. Let's land it. Hit the auto, or land button. And what I want to do this time, folks, I'm going to raise up. I'm going to raise up that um, camera lens um, so that we can see more horizon. You are going to be seeing more prop in the video. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. So it's, that's up a little bit better. And I'll stop that video recording, too. And also, I want to make sure Mob is in a court recording. Hold on, folks. Okay, Mabazin is recording, so let's go back to our position, 
And this time, let's send it out on a farther mission. Uh, first off, we got to get back in the air again. So starting the recording again. And recording is started. Starting the motors again. Going up. Going higher. Okay, it's up there. Let's go a bit higher and go a little bit out further. Again, I don't want to hit the ground as it's doing these missions. Okay. And this time, let's go see what this white thing is over here on the map. Oh, let's go back to that. Selecting the second one. What is this white thing on the map over there? And this time, let's go see what these two white things are on the map over here. And anything else we see? That looks interesting on the map. Now let's go back down the road again to there. And then come right back home again. Okay, we're close to home. And then hitting submit. Submit. Okay, then I hit submit. Let's, let's delete all those. Something's not right here. Let's try it again. Going back to our position. Selecting that. I want to go to see that first. And then I want to go over here. Let's try that. And then this thing here. And then this spot here. And then come home. And then hit submit. And slide it to start. Okay, here we go. Waypoint mission. And how's my battery, by the way? Three quarters, so we're good there. Going over to see that thing first. And then going off in that direction. To waypoint two. Let's zoom out a bit so we can see that. Way over there. So this actually does waypoints rather well. I'm surprised. <laughs> but again, yeah, um, MJX would have, this would be over the top if they'd include onboard image stabilization of the video using a microprocessor on board the, the drone. That is going to wait, bring it up, the weight up, so they're going to have to eliminate something else. Maybe that camera, I don't know, <laughs> or not the camera, that uh uh, yeah, eliminate the optical flow. I don't think that's really needed on a GPS drone. Maybe eliminate that uh, L big uh, bright light on the belly there. I don't think that's really needed either. Okay, most people don't fly these at night. They fly them during the day for photography. So, okay, that's the mission. So yeah, if they, MJX considers including electrical or electronic stabilization, this could be a real winner being under 250 grams okay bringing it closer again let's try the photos on this thing we haven't done that yet okay stopping the video recording then turning it this way here so the sun's in my eyes and let's go back to this type of view coming down lower got to get up real close to this thing because of that wide lens and we'll take a couple photos here so you can see me go up a bit higher and one more three photos showing you the camera okay starting the video camera one more time let's oh let's put it on the ground there's one thing i want to do next I haven't done yet and that's rocket again that camera can be tilted up or down What we're going to do, folks, is tilt it all the way down. Supposedly, it can go 90 degrees down. So, can it? Put my controller down on the ground first. Can it? Yes, it can. Okay. So, it's 90 degrees down for this next view, or next video. I'm um, starting the video camera. And the video camera is started, starting the motors. Taking off. There's our landing pad, going up a bit higher, getting under it, can you see me, and away we go, rocket take off, <laughs> I like to twirl it as it goes up, 
going up, up, higher in future in this space. Okay, I think it's reached its max altitude. <laughs> Let's come back down. I'm going to give a little forward movement as it's coming down. A little forward movement. Do some throttle. Okay, we're going to go a lot more forward movement. That, that seems to help come down faster when you go forward for some reason. I don't know why, but these drones, they come down faster when you're going forward. I speed forward. <laughs> and we're going to land it one more time. Raise the camera back up again, all the way, all the way up. And we'll do some high speed flying with this. I think I've demonstrated all the main advanced features of this. Let me double check that after I land it. I'll just come on here. Not there. Press the land button. <laughs> Don't try to land it manually, folks. Press that land button. It does, for some reason, does a better job. And let's see, the motor shut off. The motors are shut off. This time, okay, what have I missed? Have I missed anything? Let's go in here. The orbit. Headless mode for lying. There you go. There's something we can do. And that's an up and away using headless mode. For that, I am going to tilt it about 30 degrees down. Point it that way because I want it to go, I want to go that way with it. And let's stop the video recording and start it again. Starting the video recording again. And taking to the air. We're in the air. Let's get up so you can see me. Okay. Uh, turn it toward me. Select headless mode. And then sliding it. Now, since it took off pointing in that direction, pushing forward, it should go in that direction. Let's try that up and away. There we go. Crane shots. I love crane shots. Up and away crane shots. I, and it can do it. We'll go away, up and away. Like the ending of Easy Rider. <laughs> okay, from there, let's do a return to home. And also, first turn, turn off uh, headless mode. Headless mode's off. And automatic return to home. Pressing the return to home button. See how it does. I'm gonna step back as it's coming back. It's, I'm going to go toward the sun. Let's see, what have I forgot to mention? Oh, um, charging of this thing, charging the batteries with this. This uses LIHV batteries. And when plugging that into two amp wall charger, it took me like four hours to charge those batteries uh, to get that last 0.2 voltage instead of 7.4 volts this is a 7.6 volt battery and to get that last 7.2 voltage to get it up to 7.6 it took me four hours and the way you can tell this is fully charged the lights blink green they blink while it's charging and when it's fully charged the light uh, turns solid green for each battery in its charger so if it's blinking green it's charging you know it's charging it's trying to get that last 0.2 volts to 7.6 volts but once it's fully green it is fully charged and ready to go. Again, you're going to need to use a 2 amp wall charger or better. Don't go trying to charge this in your computer. It'll take a couple days to charge these LIHV batteries. Okay, let's stop that video. And what haven't we done? Oh yeah, I want to go high speed flying around the area, but pointing up the camera. So Now again, we are going to be seeing a lot of blade in this one because I want... I want to be able to see the horizon while I'm going forward. Putting the drone on the ground. Starting the video camera one more time. Still got a lot of battery, so this should be good, folks. And setting high rate. Oh, we were in high rate. 
Okay, let's set it in low right then. And we're going to go explore the area. So, let me put my glasses on because I'm going to be flying mainly in line of sight with this one because the um, FPV is choppy on this when you get out to distance. Okay, video is recording, starting the motors, hitting automatic takeoff, and let's just fly it around the area, going up higher and explore the area. See if we can find any wildflowers, desert wildflowers out here today. So yeah, it's a nice little drone, what I've been seeing so far. Let me adjust the uh, antenna downward to point toward that drone as it's going up on. We're going to lose FPV here shortly. But um, overall, it's actually a nice little drone. Again, under 250 grams, no registration needed with this. That is the big thing about it. The biggest thing about it, the best thing about it. Like the Mavic Mini, also not no registration required. This one's cheaper than the Mavic Mini, but again, this one does not have image stabilization. Oh, there we go, low battery and I'm about past 300 meters. Let's see if it actually comes home on its own. Right there. How far away am I? Not 300 meters, 150, 140 meters. But if you're greater than 30 meters away and you reach the halfway battery power on this, uh, this is true for most M MJX drones for some reason, they come back and they won't let you fly further than 30 meters away for that last bit of battery. So that's what we're going to have to do here. And that's its low battery return home. It brings it back in. I think I can turn that off right now. No, nope. no, nope, it's still doing it. Let's bring it down. And bring it down. Okay, let's just fly it around 30 meters. Let's see if we can run into a geofence. Hold on, we're going out, going out, going up on. Where's the geofence? No geofence. It just. Okay, so you can still fly past 30 meters. It's just warning you. That's, that's good. You get an annoying beep. It brings it home. Let you know that battery's getting low. But then you get an annoying beep for the remainder of the battery. Eventually, I'm going to keep this in close, you know, within about 30 meters, 40 meters. But uh, eventually it's going to do its low battery return to home. And again, I want to see if that does the same thing where it, the uh, motors keep running. That's... That's not good. Coming around. Let's do a high speed over me. <laughs> FedEx over the FedEx truck. Yeah, beautiful day out here in the desert today. Let's go to high higher rate. Okay, now we're at high speed, high rate. We'll finish out the battery at high rate. High speed flying. Zoom. Cool. Trying to gently turn it. We're going to use up the last bit of the battery here. Go up the gully a bit. Now, you know, this, they claim 15 minutes of flying. Um, it's actually, I guess it's actually pretty close, but really that's meant for hover. You know, if you're flying in a hover, I don't fly in hover, folks. <laughs> so that's no fun. I like to be moving. Let's go over here. Coming around, coming around. It's a smooth flyer, this little thing. Smooth and fast. Stop it at there, we're gonna finish it at. Okay, there we go. Return to home. It's not doing a return to home, it's just doing a landing. So we're gonna hit land right there.
the motor's going to shut off. There, that shut the, shut off that time. And I think the video, oh, the video is still recording. Let's stop the video. Okay, video recording has stopped. And uh, let me turn this off. I can, or actually, let me turn this off first. And that is off. And then turning this off to stop the annoying beep. So that is the Bugs 7 B7. Neat little under 250 gram drone. Meant, <laughs> designed so that you don't need to register with the FAA or or whatever organization you got in your country for aviation. Neat idea. Uh, again, the downsides I see of it are it's wide angled lens. You know, this is a security camera in effect, folks, is what they put on here. Wide angled lens security camera. But it's high resolution wide angle lens security camera, so that's good. Um, but uh, that leaves, uh, that enables the company to think about incorporating electronic image stabilization. You can crop that widescreen down and electronically stabilize the video so it doesn't bounce around like you probably saw in the video of my flight flying. So, well, I hope you enjoyed the B7. This is Quadcopter 101 signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.